sound speeds. And if you do any kind of audio recording, then you're probably familiar with the term roll off or maybe low pass or high pass filter. But what do they mean? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss it. Let's start with lower high pass filters. Simply put, it is either a low or a high frequency or really any frequency at all that is allowed to pass unchanged and anything else is filtered off at a certain frequency point. So if you're talking about the human hearing frequency range, starting with 20 hertz on this side and 20,000 hertz on this side, let's take, for example, 80 hertz. At 80 hertz, you will start attenuating and diminishing the audio level for anything below that point. That means 80 hertz, 70 hertz, 60 hertz, and so on. Now, why would you want to apply a lower high pass filter? It depends on what you're recording. If, for example, you're recording human dialogue, then the frequency range that you're most likely concerned with is anywhere above about 80 hertz because the fundamental frequencies of the human voice, and if you want to know what that is, look at that video right there, starts around 80 hertz and that is on the low end of a male voice and it goes up through harmonics and overtones up to about 17k so anything above a certain frequency like for example 17k 16k 15 14 whatever you decide is not important to have in your audio signal so if there's a high-pitched noise that you might not be able to hear but maybe your teenagers or young children could you might want to just knock off anything above a frequency range that is not important to your recording. The same applies to your lower frequencies. Like, for example, if the human voice does not go below 80 hertz and you're doing dialogue recording, then you don't really necessarily need to record anything below 80 hertz. That would be more like handling noise on a handheld microphone or air conditioning noise or an engine rumbling down the road of a car that's idling. And the reason why those might be lower frequencies that you're hearing and not necessarily the highs is because you'll probably have something between you and that sound. And the higher frequencies are going to be slowed down quicker than the lower frequencies would through some sort of a harder surface like a wall. The frequency that you want to start attenuating at is considered your cutoff frequency. And that doesn't mean cutoff like snip. Anything below that is completely wiped out. That is the point when your audio starts to attenuate from that point and below. Most microphone manufacturers attenuate audio in six decibel increments. That would be like 6, 12, 18, 24, basically multiples of six over the course of an octave. Now, how can you determine an octave away from a particular frequency? It is either double or half of that particular octave number. So, for example, 80 hertz, one octave above that would be 160 hertz or below would be 40 hertz. Sometimes instead of seeing a decibel reduction, you'll see a term like order, first order, second order, third order, fourth order, and that simply means multiples of six decibels. So a first order roll off would be a six decibel attenuation. A second order roll off would be 12 decibels. A third order would be 18 and a fourth order would be 24 and so forth. So again, our cutoff frequency is 80 hertz. One octave below that would be 40 hertz. And if we're applying a second order roll off then the audio would be unattenuated at 80 hertz and by the time it hits 40 hertz it would be attenuated 12 db not really actually at 80 hertz it would actually be attenuated 3 db and that's simply because the curve starts above 80 hertz and takes a little bit of time to start curving downwards but the cutoff frequency is the point when you have achieved 3 db of attenuation as a side note 6 db of attenuation is what you experience every time you double your distance away from a noise source and it also reduces the sound pressure level by half so for example keeping numbers easy if i am one meter away from a noise source that's registering about 100 decibels and if i double that distance away from that source to two meters then then it would basically sound to me like it's 94 decibels. And if I double that distance again to four meters away, it's going to sound like it's about 88 decibels. Now that would be in a perfect like open field with no obstructions and nothing for that sound to bounce off of. But if you have buildings and stuff around you, then you could get some bounce and it wouldn't reduce quite as linear as that. So if you've ever looked at a frequency response chart and wondered why there's such a big distance between 20 and 30 hertz and a smaller distance between 30 and 40 hertz and even smaller between 40 and 50 and so forth, it's because every time you double a frequency, what happens? It changes one octave and it makes it easier to plot things like roll offs in a much more linear pattern if you split that frequency response chart up into octaves and you can read the frequencies accordingly. So if there's already a three decibel attenuation at your cutoff frequency, and the voice that you're recording is very, very deep, 
closer to, let's say, 80 hertz, then you might want to actually shift your cutoff frequency lower so that it doesn't start to roll off until after 80 hertz. So that could mean that you start to roll off at maybe 60 hertz instead of 80. By rolling off your frequencies below and above the frequencies that you really care about in your audio recording, you're going to ensure that your audio recording is just what you want it to be and nothing more. So keep that in mind because that's sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.